Yes, man. How are we? It's Matt back. We are up to episode four of the Brentford save, uh, in which we are using statistical analysis to aid our recruitment and to push us for the leagues and to hopefully win the lot. Um, the last time I left you off, we had just played Luton Town way back in October. I've flown ahead. I'm really getting into this save. Um, we have actually just played the reverse fixture against Luton. Uh, on the 20th of January, and yeah, as I, say, I flew ahead, forgot to record an episode in between, um, so here we are, league table's looking like this, we're top of the league on 57 points, you can see our league position there, um, we had a bit of a lull in between, which I'll show you now, and then we've just gone on a mental run since, um, that was when I last left you, it was the TV game against Luton, and then, yeah, we had the little lull there, didn't win a game in five, and since then, we've only lost one game, which was in the FA Cup 2 Cardiff. Um, this game made me realise, as it was the start of January, quite quickly, that we're, we're lacking in depth. Um, we have had a few outgoings. Um, I'm just going to show you them now. We've had... Uh, on the outs, we loaned out Charlie Good to Cardiff as he needed game time. Um, we actually sold Henrik Dalsgaard to Strasbourg for £1 million. Um, Henrik's a very good player on this game. Uh, he's played for Brentford for a long time as well. Uh, he had the DNA of what we wanted, but he was 31 years of age. He's actually taken a wage cut to go to Strasbourg, which is mad because he wouldn't accept anything less than thirty grand a week for me. He also wanted a top division promotional uh, wage rise of... 20 percent um so that you know that would have taken him if, if he wanted the 30 grand and then he was getting that he's going to be pushing 36 grand a week for the 31 year olds whose physicals were declining um so we got him off the books and he had six months left on his contract and um, strasbourg actually offered him a contract to first and we somehow managed to wangle it into um into them actually paying a million pound for him um so i'm i'm sort of happy with that uh, we've also loaned out Brian and Buemo to Tenerife. Um, ah, if you are a Brentford fan, um, you're probably going to be fuming on me, but take a look at that and you will see exactly why we have done that. Um, he got one assist and no goals in 40 games for us this season, an average rating of 6.62. Um, he was genuinely terrible. If you look at the league stats down here, um, he started a few, he started nine, came on in five. Um, his tackling was genuinely the best thing about him. He was terrible. He was genuinely terrible. So he, off he went. Uh, and we've made a couple of signings in. Um, let me have a little look. We've got transfers in. Transfer history. So the replacement for Henrik Dalsgaard uh, was this lad. It's a young lad called Sofian Alcuch. We got him uh, for £1.5 million from Nemo Olympique. Uh, as you can see, he's played two games. He's actually managed to get himself a goal. Um, we found him. Um, the scouts went out and we were looking. I've, I've basically sent scouts to the top five European nations because Brexit takes effect really early on this game from the first of Jan as it did in real life. Uh, and it's really hard to get work permits for the players who aren't playing in European countries. Um, so I've had to send the scouts out there. Um, just as a quick one, for those who don't know, um, whether you're doing it on player search or for scouted players, you can actually edit it. Uh, if you go down to these add conditions down here and you go to transfer, uh, there's a work permit one that says work permit chance, you can see here. If you change it to work permit likely, um, it'll flash up. Let me just get rid of these. It'll flash up all the players that your scouts have found. Uh, you can also do this on player search, so it's every player within the database that your team knowledge has. Um, that will likely get a work permit upon review, um, which is massive. That it, it, it comes in very handy. Um, you know, it's it, it's really hard to find good players in the English divisions because of Brexit. Um, so th to be able to basically scout the world or Europe in my case and bring them in, um, it's a massive plus. Um, but yeah, just just quickly going back there. Um, Sofian was the the lad we identified as the replacement for Dalsgaard. Uh, if we can see his history playing for Neem, um, he was he was doing okay. It was a six point eight seven. Um, it wasn't his assists or his goals or whatever. Um, it was more so his tackling stats, which we you know sadly we can't see from here. Um, 
if we've got any like analytical reports, or is it just going to show me? Yeah, it's only going to show me his stats since he came to us. Which is a little bit annoying, but... Yeah, anywho. Um, yeah, he was identified as coming in. Uh, he's 22. He was on the transfer list. Um, he had very, very good tackling stats. He had very, very good um, chance creation stats. And he was rivaling Dalsgaard for them. Um, so, you know, he was brought in for relatively cheap. It's 1.5 million. He's 22. He's got a bit of potential in him. Um, again, not looking at the star ratings because we don't do that here. And I'm going to show you another player that ties into that. Um, but yeah, he's he's he fits the DNA. He's got decent decisions, decent anticipation, decent determination and teamwork and work rate uh, are quite high for this division. He's, he's a fit lad. He's young. Um, he gets forward whenever possible. He's got very good crossing uh, and he's got very good vision as well for a right back. So he was brought in. Uh, he's been performing quite well. Uh, he's not the only in, though. Um, the next player that we brought in uh, as cover, as we said, the 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 game against Cardiff sort of made me realise that we're not very very good in the, <laughs> the old squad death department. And actually, the squad had a go at me about that, and I had to make a promise to the team to, um, to improve the squad. Uh, let me just find Pontus Janssen, because he was the biggest... Uh, the biggest moaner of this. Uh, pleased efforts are being made to strengthen the squad, as that was one of the promises that we give. Um, yeah, <laughs> it was really annoying, but they kind of had a point. Um, so we sort of we went ahead and we and we got some new players in. The next guy is this guy. It's Zachariah Diallo. Um, he's thirty-four years of age, but he's his stats for Lons in um, League 2 were absolutely ridiculous. He, he, had, he had something like 95% tackles and uh, something like seven headers one per match, uh, which obviously in the lower leagues is is, is great. Um, but if you're looking at his actual attributes as well, uh, heading 40, marking 13, tackling, his determination, decisions, concentration, composure, everything like that, his jumping, his, his natural fitness at 34 for being 15 is great. He's also got 14 stamina. Uh, I think he was brought in for quite, yeah, minimal 600k. Um, he's basically just going to be cover for Pinnock uh, and Janssen. Um, Actually, Pinnock is not the starter now. It's actually this guy. It's Madsbeck Sorensen. Um, he has been a revelation this season. You can see that 7.26 average rating. If we look at the squad screen and we highlight them, uh, we also highlight, let's highlight Pinnock and let us highlight Janssen because they've been the three in rotation. Uh, he's got the highest average rating. His tackle rate is next to Janssen as well. His headers one is a lot more than the other two. He's a big lad. He's six foot four. His interceptions are better than Janssen, and they're rivaling Ethan Pinnock. Uh, key passes we don't tend to um, take a look at, and his his passes completed per ninety is a little bit less than Ethan. Uh, the difference between Pinnock and Sorensen is obviously we want to play him as a ball player. We're actually training him as a libero on attack because it gets all these stats up. As you can see, it's actually got his vision, his technique up as well. Um, He's also got very good traits for a ball playing defender. He bring he tries to play his way out of trouble. He tries long range passes, and I'm actually going to do another one now. We wanted to bring the ball out of defence. Uh, let me see. That's not the one we want. Is it his technique? Here we go. Try to bring the ball out of defence. He does have a good dribbling ability. He's got 10 dribbling, essentially, but I'm going to say, yeah, we want him to do that. Yeah, he's got 9 dribbling. We're training him as a libero. He's, yeah, he, he can do that. So he's doing that. Um, Yeah, the, the next one we brought in, Um, he's just coming back from injury now. Um, My main man, Tyreek, who has, <laughs> has been absolutely flying. He's been smashing it. Um, 7.2, he's got 7 assists and 4 goals. Um, the guy we brought in to sort of rival him is a bit of an odd one, but again, this is what I love about doing it this way. It's this guy. It's Lissandro Semedo. You can see he's made two appearances for me. He played the full 90 in both. Uh, he's got a bit near two shots off in both of those games each. Um, his pass is completed. It's 
very high, 45.5 passes completed and two key passes per 90 minutes. Um, that means that for the two games that he has played, he's made at least one key pass in both of those games. Um, he He's great. Um, if you actually have a little look at him again, attribute-wise, he's not fantastic. Um, he doesn't necessarily fit into the mental attribute side of the DNA that I want to to employ here at Brentford but he's only listed as an impact sub so he's only starting because Fosu's been injured um, but he's actually doing very well again we ignore the star ratings if we look at his report um, they're saying he's a league one player I, the, the recommendation was 18 nah sorry no he's clearly better than that um, if we looked at his history he was Playing for Fortuna Sittard, his average rating wasn't great, um, but his dribbles per 90, his, um, his, his take-ons and his key passes were actually really high. Um, Fortuna Sittard aren't having the best of seasons in the Eredivisie, if you take a little look here. They are 17th, so I put that down more to the fact that Fortuna Sittard themselves, maybe the tactics aren't right, maybe they've not got the the best strike force, etc., etc., and um, but he to me was sort of like a um, like a diamond in the rough. He he was outperforming the rest of the team. Uh, we took a risk. It was a bit pricey for someone like him, and the fact he was an international player bumped his price up. So we had to pay one point two million pound for him, which I'm not enamoured about. Um, but he's hit the ground running. He's got an assist, um, and he's been playing very very well. Um, again, he's got the traits that we look for for someone who's going to be playing on the right and the left. He likes to beat his man repeatedly. He runs to the ball often. And when he's playing on the left-hand side, he does cut inside. Um, we Again, we, we swip, swap between these two quite often, like we would do with Tariq Fosu. Um, and, and yeah, he's, um, he, he's again providing the backup. So there's three backup players that we've brought in for the, for the price of uh, just under... Two and a half million, I think it is, and yeah, it, that, that I'm happy with that. Um, other notable performance that we've had recently, um, even Tony's been really indifferent. Um, he's joint goals now with Marcus Force. Uh, if we compare the two, they've both got eight goals. Force has not played uh, as much as him. Here we go. Marcus Force. Uh, report wise, they think that uh, Tony's better than Force, hands down. Um, but statistically, look at this. He's massively outplaying Ivan Tony at the moment. And if we go back into the squad screen a bit, you can see minutes wise. Um, he's got nearly a thousand minutes less than Ivan Tony, and he's matching him. If not beating him, um, shots per ninety, he's close enough to. Goals per ninety, he's outperforming him. His xG, he's outperforming it. Tony's xG, he's got eight goals. His xG is eight point five, so you know it's there or thereabouts. Uh, passing completion as well, he, he completes more passes. Um, and his headers one per ninety. Um, he's he's actually better in the air than Ivan Tony, which he's got eleven heading and eleven jumping reach, whereas Ivan is a little bit bigger. And he's got 15 jumping reach and 15 heading. So he's actually forced his way into the team as the starter at the moment. Um, if we take a little look at his form, he's got two goals in his last five games. Um, but he did go on a real, a real purple patch for me. Um, so he was the starting striker for a little while. Um, on that note, though, because we've we've loaned him Waymo out and we're looking at selling him, um, we really need another striker to come in. So there's this guy that we've identified. Um, he's currently got a work payment appeal. It's five and a half million pounds for him. Um, but if we look, uh, let's go into scouting and the shortlist because he was up there. Uh, no. Um, where is he? Did we find him on player search? We may have found him on player search. Uh, it was between that guy uh, and this guy, Marco de Grasa, who you can see is on a good good season for uh, Juventus under 23s. Um, I've got him on. 
uh, let's see how he's been getting on. So compare him with so Marcus Foss because Marcus Foss is um the main performer at the minute. Um, comparatively, the close enough. Again, Pierre Yves Hamel is, is playing in a in a top division. He's playing for Lorient. Lorient aren't the best team. Um, so you wouldn't. They're fourteenth in league and so you wouldn't be expecting him to be doing doing a madness. Um, but he's actually performing really, really well. He started nine games. He scored eight goals. Um, he's got an xG of six. And yeah, he, he's, I think he's just got something about him. Um, the scout report that came back basically saying again the normal stuff. He needs to learn language. He might be fairly susceptible. He's gonna count towards the foreign player count now. Um, but. Uh, he would get the work permit. His ability to spot a pass and create chances underlines his intelligent play because his DNA suits. Um, he enjoys big matches and he's a fairly consistent performer. The fact we play is a deep line forward on attack is quite good. Those traits, I'm happy with that. Um, the flair is a bit of an issue, um, but if he's coming in, he's, he's going to be coming in as like a squad player. It means that we can also use force in the wide areas as well. Uh, and yeah, so other than that, if I'm taking a little look at the, at the squad, or it's a bit hard to see where we're, we're not doing great because we're top of the league. Um, analysis report. Let's see the stats. Oh, the fuck? No. Analyst report. Um, we're just genuinely outperforming the average. Which is a good thing. The, the thing we're not really performing on is the tackling, which is sort of what we needed to look at next. So if I'm gonna do it for the scout of players first of all, just to see, um, our highest performing defenders is Sorensen, who's got a tackle percentage rate of eighty three percent, Pinnock at seventy four, and Janssen at eighty three. So anything above eighty three percent is kind of where we're we're aiming for so if we look uh let's not just do it defenders let's do it for everyone because we could then maybe get some midfielders in and make a few more tackles um tackle completion ratio is can we do it one higher yeah so we want maybe 85 and above and for those who are overperforming it Again, we want to look at the guys who have played the most minutes, which uh, are going to be these three guys. Uh, his interceptions, 2.69, 2.67, 2.19. Headers, 1. Okay. And then the tackle percentage rate. So if you're looking at it like that, William Gab uh, sorry, Ruben Gabrielson is probably the, the standout there. I'm actually tempted to go for this guy, William Remy. Because what we're looking for is those players who would who perform and he's got a bit he's, he contributes up front as well. Can you compare Remy to Gabrielson? Compare the I'm gonna have to go back to William Ruben Gabrielson. To lose her in um uh the second division in France as well now, which Again, we don't want to be picking too many players from low down the pyramid because that's when it can start doing us over. Uh, the fact he's winning so many games in a division that's lower than Legia Warsaw are playing is concerning. Passing completion statistics, attribute wise, Gabrielson is better. What's the report saying? His concentration, his versatility is not great, and he's got a competitive streak, but he's consistent, he matches the philosophies. And Leonard's excellent core social group fit. Yeah, I'm really tempted for Remy, purely look at that cost. He adds squad depth as well. Um, If we compare him with... Who's been the best? It's been Sorensen, hasn't it, at the moment? If we compare him with Sorensen... Mm, yeah, ignore the shots... 
tackles one per 90 minutes, 1.17, because obviously we're playing better, we're outperforming the league, whereas Remy's playing for Legia Warsaw. Where are they actually, out of curiosity? Have I got that league loaded? I haven't. But they won it last year, so I'm assuming they might be quite high up in it this year. Distance covered, add the trip. I'm tempted to go to Remy. What's his age and sign? 240 to 350k. And he provide competition. And that's sort of what we need. He's wanting to play as a no-nonsense fullback. And yeah, that's that's his. He's a ball player, isn't he? I mean, we could potentially just play him as the central defender. 15, 13, 15. His determination is not great. Good strength. Good jump and reach. Okay, I'm going to take a little punt at Remy. So this is what they're after. Could we just be cheeky and drop 150k in there? 475. Okay, I think they'll accept about 320. Told you. Yeah, okay, so that's sort of that's sort of what we look for. Um that's how we, we do the transfers. I'm quite glad you got to see that. Um he's just basically gonna provide cover if he does come in. Um he he's not the best, but it, it then gives us the rotation options. Um there's a few Chinese clubs sniffing around Pontus Janssen. and um, if any bids do come in, he's definitely gonna want to get off purely because of the wages they're gonna offer him. So somebody like that coming in um would would pretty much be the um the, the standard that we need. Um he's he's there to provide cover. He's playing in a league that's pretty undervalued. Um he's got the stats that back up that he could be pretty useful in this division. Um so there we go. What's he wanting? Seven point five K. Just a little tip, I do use Philip Giles for a lot of things. Um squad player and he wants to play centre back or ball player. I'm happy with that. Let's drop his wage. Let's give him 8k. Drop that down. I always get rid of appearance fees and bonuses and that because look, he wants a 50% pay increase. That's four grand and not a chance. Let's push that up to 8.5. It's going to come back with 11, which means he'll accept his initial offer at 9.5. No. 10.5. Okay, we'll, we'll we'll take the eleven and a half. I think that's fine. We can take that for lean Remy. Just out of curiosity, is he related to Lotus Remy? No. It's the fact that he's a Lons supporter, and I know Lotus Remy came from Lons. <laughs> nah, I just thought we'd check that. Um, but yeah, if you look at his career stats there, he's played for Dijon, Montpellier, Lons, and, and Legia. Um, Vitaly Janelt's going to go back to Germany. He was making noises about wanting to start more, and I, I didn't really have a tactical plan for him. Uh, I said at the start of the save, I'm not really sure where I wanted to play him. Uh, and we've actually been training um, Madge Roselev, or Roselv, as a centre midfielder. You can see he's uh, gaining a bit of... Um, a bit of performance there. He's sort of getting to grips with it. Uh, we are training him as a box-to-box. -box, so it basically does... Oh, no, it's, it's taken off. As a box-to-box. -box, that's what we've been training him as. So it sort of gets all this up. Uh, but we do play him as, like, the advanced playmaker. We have sometimes rotated him with um, uh, Josh De Silva, um, just because he, he's a bit more in the tackle. Um, but the fact that he's natural at right-back as well means he provides cover. Uh, and we've got Liam Palmer as well as um, the new lad Sofian playing right back there too. So it's a, it's a, it's a bit of a mixed bag. Um, it's never guaranteed that you're going to win stuff doing this method, but you've got to sort of roll with the punches. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that this is all going to pay off. Um, what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to get us to that Swansea game. I'm going to live com that considering a. <laughs> I've skipped so far ahead, and um, they're, they're ninth in the league. Um, there's there's not many points separating sort of the playoff spaces and the, and the top two. 
so we need to start winning games like this. Um, so yeah, I'm just, I'm just gonna pause you there, and then we'll see you at the Swansea game. Ah, hey. <laughs> As opposed to, I've pressed space to, <laughs> to, to carry on and it's uh, restarted the recording, so we're getting paused again. I'm not going to edit that out, I've not got the time. Right, so we've got the uh, the Swansea game now. Um, I've just made those changes for that match. The board actually blocked the move for Hemel, um, which is probably good news for Force. Um, not so good news for us, but... It, you know, these things happen. Um, he did get his work permit accepted as well, so there's 20k wasted out of the, uh, the club coffers, but we move on from that. Um, this is how we're going to line up. As I say, Force is starting because he's been outperforming Tony at the moment. Um, Tony did score in the last match, but um, that's fine. You can see now that De Silva and Clarkson have, have developed a good role. We just need Clarkson and Jensen to develop one now. Um, Clarkson has easily become the starter. Look at them stats compared to when you first seen them. Um, he's yeah, he's gonna be something special. Um, if he can make those tens to elevens and those elevens to twelves, etc., and just sort of bump everything up by one, uh, we've got a very, 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 very good holding midfielder, and we pay five hundred k for him. Um, yeah, so this is how we're gonna line up. Um, on the bench we've got Gunnison, who was in the under twenty threes. He's now gonna become our backup goalkeeper because Luke Daniels is going. Um, Tony Tyreek Fosu um, is returning from injury. He can probably only play about 20 minutes or so. Uh, Pinnock, Baptiste, Norgard, Zacharia, Diallo, um, one of the other defensive uh, recruitments we've got. To be fair, could we put... Could we put... No, we'll keep Pinnock there. We'll keep him on there. And we'll go from there. Who needs a number? It's Gunnison. Uh, you can give him a 30 on mate. So this, uh, yeah. I'm a bit annoyed the Hemel deal got blocked, but what can you do? Um, the board put their foot down, basically. Um, they're a bit relentless, this Brentford board. Um, they kept blocking moves from Waymo. He's only valued at 5 mil. I was happy to accept 4 mil. They wanted nothing less than 7 million. So there was... Just there was a lot of money there that I could have got in, and a lot of wages I could have got off the wage um, bill. But no, that they wanted too much money. Um, we're probably gonna have to try and sell him in the summer now. But that would have paid for the um the deal for Hemel. But you know, as I say, what can you do? We move on, and we move on here at the Liberty Stadium. Uh, Swansea down in tenth now after the last round of games, and we start off on our typical. Let's pass the ball around in a quick triangle and lose it. <laughs> right. Yeah, hopefully um Samedo um has a good game. He's he's basically like for like for Fosu. That's the way I see him. And Alakuch again, he's been playing very well in the past two games, Kenneth Canyos. And Force has lost it, picked up by Sorensen, Clarkson. Palmer out to Samedo. Lovely little one-two. Get it across, and he's got an assist. And you see, I know any player can have any good game at any particular time, but this is someone who was criminally undervalued, someone that we actually paid overvalue for, but again, 1.2 million to snip because he's coming in and he's doing exactly what we want him to do. Just a little ball across the box, and Canyos is there to tap a home for 1-0 within six minutes. I think the last time we played Swansea, uh, they, they kept pumping it in early. And Canyos has picked up Marcus Fors. Oh! <laughs> Mate. My only issue I've got if we do go up is whether Tony and Force can continue performing at the level they are doing in the Premier League. Um, that ball over the top won't work for most prem, with most prem teams, so we might have to change the tactic up. Um, but I mean, at the minute, if the boat scored and ten goals a season, then that's happy. I'm happy with that. You know, distribute it around the team. I'd rather have two players scoring ten goals than one player scoring twenty, because then if he gets injured or relieved, then you're knackered, aren't you? Uh, but yeah, a good a good start here at the Liberty. Two shots, two goals. 
Uh, he's been booked a la couch. So if people hadn't noticed as well, um, we're basically trying to, for people like Alacuch and Remy coming in, we're trying to get that French speaking thing up. Oh, Josh. Ooh. Yeah, we're trying to get that sort of another social group within the team. Um, get up, son. Oh. Just to help them settle a little bit uh, and hopefully they can learn English a bit quicker and then it all sort of gels together. So there's method to the madness. It's not all just looking at spreadsheets and databases and stats and XG. <laughs> and yeah, it's not all about that. There's, there's the other sides of Football Manager that we do put in the work on. Um, but we tend to keep that off camera because I don't think it's um it's all that interesting. I find this a bit more interesting. Uh, Pontus Janssen. To Sofian Alakuch Alakosh. <laughs> Sergi Canyos to force now Jensen working out wide. Well, one back. Clarkson, Jensen, Canyos, early ball, Semedo! <laughs> it's looking like a snip, you know. It works, the proof is it's there. You don't need star ratings, you don't need. All these mad players with all this, you know, these mad attributions, only 15 in every attribute. If they statistically perform to the level in the role and position that you need for your team, or even if you don't need for your team, even if you just think you can then adapt your tactic to it, it works. That is somebody who was on the transfer list and wasn't wanted by a team that they're not near our level. His, uh, his recommendation, I think I've shown you before, it was like 19 mental goal and an assist that's his second assist in three games in his first goal but this is what we need to watch out for and this is something that the dna helps to uh to bring in is we get too complacent i've noticed it a few times particularly jansen and um, considering he's at the back that's not you know that's not a major trait that we want in our uh in our start and center back particularly one of our captains as well uh, I'm happy with that, a little 3-0, you know, keep it up. Um, I'm actually going to bring Janssen off, purely because he's, there you go, complacent. Uh, who else is? Rosalev, Fosu, Tony. God, this is the only one who's not. I'm going to bring Diallo on. I know it's saying he's complacent, but I've, just because it's his second game for the club, and he's he's now next to another French speaker being Alakush, I think, you know, we can we can sort of get that out of him. Maybe if we uh, if we give him a little shout to focus. That might go badly. He might hate that. But let's see. Diallo. There's no change for Diallo. Okay. We'll see how we get on. It's Matty Jensen. Well blocked. Add to Josh De Silva. Now Diallo. Silver to Sorensen. Clarkson. Spreads out to Alakush. Now Kanyas. Alakush. Jensen. Alakush. Knocking it round really well. Can you get his delivery in? Can't. Jensen can though. And it's Marcus Force with his second of the game. We put the sorts of swans here, you know. That is lovely play. I mean, this is definitely a cross that's blocked. But Jensen's delivery, bang. Again, I, I don't even feel the need to bring Tony on at the minute. And that's the the worrying thing because at the start of the save, we were we knew we were going to be relying on Ivan Tony and Marcus Horse. He was playing for AFC Wimbledon on loan last year. It's just blowing him out the water. So nearly a thousand less minutes and he's now got two more goals this season than him. Bidwell's long ball over the top to Joe Gerhardt. Squares it. And it's a good tackle, you know. It was Mads Beck Sorensen with the slide challenge. And Clarkson might need to come off in a minute. But there's the ball in. It's away by Diallo. And it's picked up by Canyos. And Canyos on the counter. And can we make it five? It's Sergi Canyos. He might go all the way. No. Canyos. Wins a free kick. Is going to be taken by Jensen Shaw. Two Canyos whips it across Diallo's header back there. Oh, 
Alright, let's get Clarkson off for an hour in. We're going to bring uh, Christian Norgard on. And um, we're going to bring Kanyos off. And we're going to reintroduce Tariq. Give him some more game time. And it's all going swimmingly. And should we bring... And they're saying to me, those a bit knackered now, yeah. Okay, let's get Godos on. Alright, there's Tariq. He's back. Tariq Fosso across to De Silva. Out to Liam Palmer. The right footer on the left. Gets past the defender. Semedo's gone down. It's a penalty. Oh! And forced with a chance for a hat trick. Oh! <laughs> oh, no. Unlucky, mate. He does miss a few penalties. He's actually got really good penalty stats. Kyle Norton's thrown in. Jake Bidwell. He was actually a left back. He used to play for Everton. Uh, Fulton to Jan Dander. Now Diamande. Intercepted by Tariq Fosu. Jensen to Fors. Fosu, Jensen. Not fitting around well. Fors is more than involved in the play. Yeah, yeah, I think so, Fulton. There's Alakush. Norgard, Jensen. Look at this. Oh. <laughs> Godos. Pulls it across, oh. Across to Silva, back to Alakush. He's gone for it! Oh! oh. <laughs> Sofian Alakush, he, where's he pulled that from? What an effort. Oh, that's a poor throw in noise. <laughs> Dander. He's got an early ball in, and Joe Gerhardt has scored. Right, let's drop the line. I don't know if we've standard and not dropping the line. We're going to drop the tempo, and we're going to pop a little bit of time wasting on. Just to see the game out. I'm going to put that down to um, just good play by Jan Dander, to be honest with you. Um, Diallo probably a little bit out of position, but that's where the complacency creeps in. And we, it's something we need to sort of get out of this squad because they do it too often. Oof. Yeah, we're a game where Swansea have not really created anything. Then to get a little pot shot off there is poor, but there's the silver now. No, oh God, Jensen. Force. Fosu. And Godos, it's blocked. He's going to press it back. And it's smashed down the line. But Gerhard couldn't keep it in. That's good pressure. Happy with that. Go to a 4 2 3 1 with the Trejo Artista. <laughs> Steve Cooper's getting fancy. There's Joe Gerhardt, the goal scorer on loan from Leeds, of course, the former Wigan man. And he's dancing, and he's put it wide. I don't mind that. I mean, some people will look at that and, you know, tactically go mad and make all these changes. But he's had a pot shot that's gone well wide of the post, so he can do that all he wants, for, as far as I'm concerned. We're well in the driving seat. And we could add another with Godos. Out to Alakush. He slipped in Tariq Fosu. And it's a good save. And again, Freddie Woodman keeping Swansea to a three-goal deficit. But just four points clear to Watford. I am happy with that. Good switch. Got us. <laughs> uh, and that's all she wrote, lads. Um, yeah, it's going very well. Very, very well here at the Brentford Community Stadium. I am very happy with the way that you played. Um, yeah, we're just just once we've gone through the media stuff, um, it, it, as I say, it, I say this pretty much every episode now, but the proof is in the pudding. It, the, the stats don't lie. It, you, the players do perform. It doesn't matter what your scout thinks of them. Don't get me wrong, they are still vital to it. I do have to send them out scouting nations. I do have to send them out scouting competitions and, and getting their opinion on them because we need to know sort of the hidden stuff. Uh, send me assistance to that. But they're saying Kanyos was man of the match. He got one goal and two assists. Uh, you were superb in front of goal, my friend. But to me, the real winner of of this episode, it, it's definitely Lissandro Semedo. Um, he's just come in and he's just so comfortable. The, Cap the, the Cab Cabo Verdean, what a country. Been there, lovely holiday. Um. But he's, he's like for like for Tariq Fosu. He's come in, he's set the ground. 
running uh, and hopefully he can keep that up and he can have push us up the table fortune is it hard don't know what you've let go lads anyway um that was matt that was episode four please do like and subscribe um if you enjoy this content if there's anything more you want to see as always please do let me know and until next time take care